Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are doing monetary policy. We are looking at monetary policy in a principles of macroeconomic course. So this will be introduction to monetary policy and we will just be looking at a very simple model that will describe how Bank of Canada targets the overnight interest rate. In this case, I will be looking at the money market model or the liquidity preference model. This model primarily says that we hold money as an asset, an asset which is a part of our overall portfolio of wealth. Now when we are holding an asset we have a demand for that asset and we have a supply for that asset so we will have a market for money in which we are looking at the equilibrium price or cost of money once we have established where the money demand comes from where the money supply comes from we will then look at the equilibrium in this market and then how equilibrium can change because of various type of shocks in this market so let's go ahead and look at money demand first in order to understand the demand for money balances we are now going to compare money to an alternative alternative asset. Now that alternative asset could be any non-monetary asset and for simplicity we will assume them to be bonds. Bonds remember are never part of money because the transaction cost of converting them into cash or checkable deposit is too high. So now we have a choice between two type of assets. Now this alternative asset or bonds can be short-term bonds or long-term bonds. We will typically compare money to a short-term bond because money is very liquid. It doesn't need to be converted into cash. It is cash itself whereas long-term bonds take a very long time to mature so instead of comparing to money to some long-term assets we'd rather compare it to short-term bonds or short-term non-monetary assets short-term is defined as any asset that has a maturity of less than a year now why do we hold money when we know there is an alternative asset that will give us some interest income people primarily hold money because of its liquidity it is the most liquid asset in our portfolio of wealth and that's why we all always hold some wealth in the form of cash balances or nominal money balances. Now whenever we do choose to hold money, we face a trade-off. We are now letting go of the interest that we could have earned and that interest primarily becomes the opportunity cost of holding money. Higher the interest rate that I'm looking at, higher is the opportunity cost of holding money balances and therefore quantity demanded of money will decrease. And this gives us our downward sloping money demand curve or the inverse relationship between interest rates and quantity of money demanded. Drawing this inverse relationship, we get our money demand curve. Note that at higher interest rate, quantity of money demanded is quite low compared to lower interest rates. At a lower interest rate, like over here, IL, people are now willing to hold more money balances. Quantity demanded is increasing. Why? Because the opportunity cost of holding cash has gone down. Next, look at factors that shift the money demand curve. The first factor is our aggregate price level. Higher the price level, higher will be the demand for money balances. So money demand will increase or shift to the right. Why? Because when price level increases, it reduces the purchasing power of your nominal money balances. And in order to maintain the purchasing power, because we like to consume the same basket of goods and services at any given point in time, I will increase my nominal demand for money balances also by the same proportion. So for example, if I'm spending $100 every week on my basic grocery and the items that I've purchased are still the same, but prices overall have gone up in order to buy the same basket of goods and services per week I will now be holding more cash so in this case we'll see a proportional increase in money demand whenever there is an increase in price level the next factor that causes changes in our money demand is real GDP real GDP remember is also depicting the real income of households in our economy higher the real income higher will be the demand for any given asset in my portfolio of wealth you can also think of this in terms of transactions if I'm earning more real income I'll be now spending more more also. So my consumption will increase, I'll be spending more money on goods and services, firms will be spending more on capital goods and overall we'll see higher demand for money balances. So increases in our real GDP will cause a shift in money demand curve to the right. Thirdly, we have changes in our credit markets and technology. So in financial systems where credit is easily available, people will not need to spend their own money. They can always make purchases with the help of credit cards or loans from banks. And in such an economy, we'll see that holding everything else constant, the more efficient their financial markets or credit markets are, people will be willing to hold less money balances. And money demand in this case will actually decrease with advancement in their credit markets. As banking technology changes over time, you're allowed to withdraw your money from ATM machines or make electronic transfer payments. We see people 
do not always need to hold a lot of cash. And here again, we'll see decline in the demand for money balances with improvements in banking technology. However, note that if the cost of this technology is very high, so if it's prohibitive for you to use this technology because of the cost associated with it, in that case, the demand for money balances will increase because people would not want to incur those additional fees associated with that technology. In my diagram, you can see for any given interest rate, in this case, I1, if any of these factors, whether it's price level, real GDP, changes in our credit markets, or banking technology, if any of them are causing a quantity demanded to increase at any given interest rate, the money demand curve increases and shifts to the right. So for example, higher price level, money demand increases. And the same for any of these other factors. If any change in these factors, which increases the benefit from holding cash, it will cause the money demand to increase to the right. If the factor changes in a way that it increases the cost of holding money balances, in that case, money demand will decrease and shift to the left. Now that we have understood the shifters of money demand, let's look at some examples. So in the first example over here, we have merchants charging a 1% fee on all debit and credit card transactions for any purchases that are less than $50. In this case, you will see that people who typically spend less at a particular store, they would want to hold more cash in order to avoid this transaction fee and therefore demand for money balances will increase. In this other example, we have banks raising the interest rate paid on one-year GICs. Banks are giving you a bigger interest or a higher interest rate on them in order to induce you to put your money in these deposits. Here we see the opportunity cost of holding money is going up and therefore quantity demanded for money will decrease. And in this particular situation, we don't have the money demand curve shifting, but rather a movement along the curve because opportunity cost has gone up, quantity demanded of money will go down. So that is simply a movement along the curve for money demand. So these were some examples. Now that we're done with our understanding of the money demand curve, let's move on to money supply. Money supply is going to look at the relationship between nominal interest rates and quantity of money supplied in our economy. Now money is printed by the central bank. So we have to look at how much money does the central bank provide. In this model, we'll assume that the Bank of Canada or your central bank can arbitrarily set the quantity of money in the economy. So money supply will be set at some level M bar by our central bank and therefore it does not respond to interest rate fluctuations. So if this quantity of money supplied is not moving in response to changes in interest rates, we have a vertical money supply curve. It is vertical at the level of money that is set by Bank of Canada or your central bank. Equilibrium in the market is where quantity of money demanded is exactly equal to quantity of money supplied and that is given as our point E over here and you can see this corresponds to our equilibrium interest rate in the money market. Now note whenever the interest rate for the given demand and supply curve is not at IE, we will either have an excess supply or excess demand for money balances. Now remember the alternative asset is bonds or your non-monetary asset. So whenever interest rate is too high, I'd rather hold bonds. So people will quickly want to convert their cash into bonds and that will create an excess supply of money in our market. So we have surplus in the money market and this surplus will push the interest rate down. And whenever we have interest rate that is too low or lower than the equilibrium interest rate, you can see a quantity of money demanded is now quite high. It's at ML, whereas quantity supplied is stuck at M bar. In this case, opportunity cost of holding cash is very low. So we have many people wanting to hold cash, but not enough cash being supplied. And that creates a shortage in the market. This shortage is telling me that people are now converting converting non-monetary assets like bonds into cash. And as they convert them into cash, they are driving up the interest rate in the money market. The interest rate will be driven up. So for given demand and supply, excess supply or excess demand will always eliminate itself and the market will always converge towards the equilibrium point or the equilibrium interest rate, where the quantity of money supplied is again equal to a quantity of money demanded. Fluctuation in interest rates will arise when our supply curve or our money demand curve change. So we know from a previous analysis, money demand curve can fluctuate because of prices, because of real GDP, because of credit markets, technology, etc. So any of these factors, when they cause your money demand curve to increase or decrease, you can see the equilibrium interest rate will no longer remain the same. It will also fluctuate. Typically, a higher money demand will cause interest rates to go up and a lower 
more money demand will cause your equilibrium interest rate to go down. So money demand shifters will cause volatility in our interest rates. Let's now look at how Bank of Canada can control the money supply. Remember Bank of Canada can increase money supply through tools of monetary policy like open market operations, advances to financial institutions or government deposit auctions. We look at the role of open market operations within the framework of the money market now. So if Bank of Canada increases the money supply through an open market purchase of securities, you can see our money supply is increasing and shifting to the right. As soon as the money supply increases at my initial equilibrium interest rate, this creates a surplus in the market and the surplus is going to push the interest rate down. As interest rate is driven down, people are willing to hold more cash balances and quantity of money demanded increases along the curve. And we're now at equilibrium E2 where interest rate is now at I2. So Bank of Canada, remember, can always put downward pressure on interest rates by increasing the money supply in the economy. So let's assume we were initially at I1, but the target for the overnight interest rate is IT. So we are currently at an interest rate which is higher than our target level. Bank of Canada now can maintain the target by increasing money supply through open market purchase of securities. As the central bank purchases securities, remember, we are increasing the monetary base. The effect of the increase in the monetary base will be multiplied through the multiple deposit creation process and overall money supply will increase many fold depending upon the size of this money multiplier. And this is going to push the interest rate down to the target level. We can do the opposite, in which case we have our initial equilibrium at IE. And now let's assume our target interest rate is the higher one. So we want to achieve a higher interest rate target at E2. How will we ensure that Bank of Canada maintains this target? If I'm currently at E1, in order to ensure that equilibrium interest rate is at I2, Bank of Canada can decrease money supply. And as they decrease money supply, they create this shortage of money in the economy. People want to hold more cash, but there's not enough available. This is going to drive up the interest rate and we eventually move to our target level of IT. So given any particular interest rate target level, Bank of Canada can always manipulate monetary policy tools to change the money supply in the appropriate direction in order to get the desired target level. As a rule of thumb, whenever we have the interest rate currently at a higher level than our target level, we want to put downward pressure on it. Bank of Canada will conduct an open market purchase because this is going to increase increase money supply and put the desired downward pressure on this interest rate. And whenever the interest rate is lower than the target, now I want to put upward pressure on this interest rate. I will now reduce the money supply through open market sale of securities. This will cause a shortage in the money market and therefore push the interest rate up to its target level. So that was a pretty much basic understanding of our money market diagram and how Bank of Canada can manipulate the money supply in order to maintain or achieve a particular target level. Let's Let's do an example to check our understanding of this model so far. So we're going to start by assuming that the money market is at equilibrium. So quantity of money demanded is equal to quantity of money supply. And this equilibrium interest rate also happens to be the target interest rate set by our central bank. Now let's assume price level rises by 10%. And we know when prices rise, they will have an immediate impact on our money demand curve. People are going to increase their demand for money balances by 10%. And therefore our money demand curve increases and shifts to the right. We have a new equilibrium in the money market at E2 and you can see at E2 we have a corresponding higher interest rate. Now the second part of the question is asking us if Bank of Canada wants the interest rate to come back to its target level, what can it do? So just recall our discussion about the money supply curve. Remember whenever the current interest rate is higher than the target level, we want to put downward pressure. And downward pressure can only be achieved if we have a surplus in this market. Bank of Canada can put this downward pressure by increasing the money supply and it will increase it by just enough to ensure that the new equilibrium interest rate is exactly equal to the desired target level. So we have now money supply increasing to the right to MS2. This increase in money supply at I2 creates this surplus in the market. We have a lot more cash balances than what we are willing to hold and this creates this downward pressure. As the interest rate is pushed down because the opportunity cost is now going down, quantity of money demanded increases along this new MD2 curve and we have moved to point E3. At E3, our equilibrium interest rate is back at its target level. This very simple example of how Bank of Canada responds to interest rate fluctuations in the face of money demand fluctuations reveals a very important outcome and that is 
that central banks that have an interest rate target, for them money supply is demand determined. Note that as money demand increased and pushed up the interest rate, in response to this, in order to maintain the target, we've also increased our money supply. So Bank of Canada increases money supply when money demand went up and Bank of Canada will reduce money supply whenever money demand goes down in order to ensure that our interest rate is always at its target level. Now money supply will always adjust in order to maintain interest rate targets in this economy. 